Moving down, we've now got some of the more Ameritrashy or conflict-driven games. Uh, at the top here, we've got a game called Shadow Hunters, which is an interesting one. Um, this is actually a Japanese game, and in it, players are going to be given a secret role, um, a secret kind of identity, and you are either going to be on one of two teams or a neutral character, and you're trying to work out uh, who else uh, is on your team, and you're trying to eliminate um, the other the other teams, or if you're the neutral player, you're trying to fulfil your, your goal. Um, it's a similar kind of to, to Bang, either the card game or the dice game. It's that kind of style of game. Um, there's lots of take that. There's a wee bit of deduction from the Hermit cards. It plays quite quickly. It's pretty cutthroat and mean. Um, it's got quite good art if you like that kind of anime, kind of horror style. So yeah, Shadowhunters um, is a really, really good laugh. It plays great at the, high, the, um, at the higher player counts. Um, not so good at lower player counts. So if you've got a big group and you're looking for a, a kind of party deduction um, kind of like take that fe uh, fest style game, then uh, yeah, Shadowhunters is one that you should definitely consider. Um, underneath that, we've got Game of Thrones, the board game. Uh, now this is one, again, like Rex, um, there's a person in my group that really doesn't like it, but I have found other groups that I've been able to play this one with. I really like Game of Thrones. Um, I, I love the series, so I'm a big fan of the theme, um, but the game is solid as well. It's basically like diplomacy, um, but with some added uh, meat to it, um, and it actually plays quicker than diplomacy, just because that, you know there's a finite number of rounds. But at the same time, it is a really long game. Um, it's the kind of game that's really, really fragile and really group dependent. You really need to play it with people um, that are into this type of game, you know, and that that, that won't really um, hold a grudge if someone stabs them in the back because it will happen. Um, yeah, um, it can be quite fiddly at times as well. It's not the most elegant design, but the the theme works really well with the game. And yeah, there's lots of negotiation, and it's the the combat's really deterministic, which I really like for this style of game. So it really the planning is very important. So yeah, Game of Thrones. If you want that kind of experience, the Game of Thrones experience, you know, in a box, you can't really go wrong with this one. Underneath that, we've got Doom. So again, this is another game that's based on an intellectual property. Um, so this is um, the reboot um, with the newer style art, and it, it actually uses the same kind of systems as Descent and Imperial Assault and Gears of War, and a lot of the older um, fantasy flight games of this sort. So it's a dudes on a map kind of um, dungeon crawly style game. You've got one player who's the invader, who basically plays all the monsters and you know all the the denizens of of, of hell, and then you've got the marines, and you can have up to four marines, which doesn't really work with the theme of Doom because it's always just you know the one guy Doom guy, but in this game it's fine. It just you know it just means that more people can can join in. Um, yeah, the the production of this is gorgeous. It's probably the most refined version of the system. It uses the cards a lot more. There's less dice in it um, and more more alliance in the cards and, and using your deck. Um, I really like the way the weapons work, that you're cycling through your deck using the same weapons and comboing them together, and you can pick up new ones to add them to your deck. It's really really cool. All the set pieces are there. The minis look fantastic, honestly. Um, you can see here that I've painted the marine figures, yeah, and they just they look gorgeous, you know. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for that kind of game and you like the Doom theme, then this is a no-brainer. Um, and it's one that I think that they might not get reprinted, so just, you know, I would grab it while it's still available. Underneath that, we've got Cry Havoc. Now, Cry Havoc is a portal game, and it's a dudes in a map game, uh, it's got asymmetrical powers where every race is very different. It's got a really, really cool combat system and um, where you're placing dudes in a wee battle board, um, s similar to Rising Sun, where you're trying to hedge your bets you know, on what actions are going to be the best for you for that battle. Um, yeah, again, it's one of these ones that when it came out, it was kind of... Some people really liked it and other people thought it wasn't as good as other dudes in the map games. I really like Cry Havoc. Um, I've got the expansion there as well, which adds a lot more variety with the terms of buildings and, and customizing the the races. So you know they've got different abilities. Um, I think it's a really, really, really solid design, and it plays quite quickly as well. And the mechanics are quite simple. Um, I like the whole hand management and action selection as well, um, combining the cards to get more powerful actions. So Cry Havoc, yeah. Um, 
I think it's worth checking out. You could probably pick this one up really cheap now because it doesn't really have a lot of buzz about it or hype. So you could probably get it for a knockdown price. Um, and it's a good, really nice production as well. Uh, so that's Cry Havoc. Definitely worth a look. Over here, um, we've got some more Amerit Trash and some more negotiation games. At the top, we've got Sumner Wars um, Alliances, uh, which is one of the master sets. Um, Sumner Wars, it's, it's almost like a, a, a miniatures game, but use, uses cards and a board. So it's like a cross between Warhammer and chess, really. Um, each um, player will take control of a certain faction, um, and they're all very unique. They're all, they all have their own abilities and their own units. So there's lots of variety there. Um, if you like asymmetrical races and things, again, this is a great game. I guess mechanics are really easy to pick up. The cards are used as units. They're also used as resources. So it's really all self-contained. Um, and the, the mechanics of the game are really, really uh, straightforward and really solid. So if you're looking for a, a good head-to-head -head miniatures combat game that uses cards, then uh, Sumner Wars is one that is definitely um, worth checking out. Underneath that, we've got one of my favourite games ever, Chaos in the Old World. This is one of Eric Lang's earlier designs. It's a dudes in a map area control game. Um, it's got the, the Warhammer fantasy theme, where every uh, player is going to take control of one of the four uh, Elder Gods, or whatever they're called in, in Warhammer. So you've got Korn, you've got Siege, you've got Slanesh, and you've got Nurgle. And you also have the Horned Rat, if you've got the expansion as well, so it goes up to five players. And I'm lucky enough to have the expansion. I've played this at four, I've played this at five. It's great at both player counts. I wouldn't play it with any less than four, to be honest. Um, but it's one of these games that's really fragile. Everybody really kind of needs to know what they're doing. Um, and the, the, the players need to balance the game. Because if one player's left um, unchecked, they will run away uh, with the game. But if you like that kind of game, it's great. Um, I've played Blood Rage, I've played Rising Sun. A lot of people probably prefer them. I think Chaos in the Old World is a better design. I just really like the fact that everybody's completely different in the game, you know, um, and the, the factions are so, so varied. So that's Chaos in the Old World. It's now out of print. It's really, really hard to get. If you see it somewhere, um, especially if it's affordable, pick it up. You will not regret it. Underneath that, we've got New Angelus. Now, New Angelus is a game set in the Android universe, which is um, owned by Fantasy Flight. Um, and it is basically um, a negotiation game. It's very similar to Battlestar Galactica, which we'll come to. Um, and in it, everybody's controlling their own kind of uh, faction. And there's lots of negotiation, and you're all trying to work together um, to make sure that the, the city doesn't, f um, you know, f fall into chaos. But at the same time, you're trying to get ahead of the other people in the game. It's got a really interesting thing where you are, um, you have a rival, and you have to try and beat them. So, yeah, if you like that kind of game with lots of negotiation and it's got a semi-co-op feel to it, then New Angels is definitely a, a one you should have a look at. Underneath that, we've got Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica um, is like, um, a bit like New Angels, but it's based in, you know, the, the Battlestar Galactica theme. Um, it's a wee bit more involved. It's um, a wee bit more, um, it's a longer game, uh, but it ties really, really well to the theme and uh, it is uh, a really, really excellent experience. It's quite difficult to get to the table just because of the game length, um, but uh, it's, I still think it's a fantastic game. I don't have any expansions. I don't think I, I really need them. The base game, there's enough meat there. So if you want the Battlestar Galactica experience in a box and you like negotiation games, then this is one that you should definitely play. Okay, moving over here to the right, we've got some kind of Euroy Civ building games. We've got Terraforming Mars, which um, is a game that's got lots of hype. Um, I really enjoy this one. Uh, if you like engine building and you like um, games that use cards, then this is a, a really great one. Um, it's quite a long game, but um, it's and it kind of a bit of downtime with with higher player counts, but at the same time, um, because you're just doing one or two actions in your turn, if people know what they're doing. Um, it can be quite a smooth game. It just takes a while to play. But yeah, uh, it's a really, really deep engine building game. Um, and the, the production's pretty good. For the money, it's maybe, um, maybe expect slightly better production. But um, for what it is, it's functional. And uh, the, the game itself's really good. So Terraforming Mars, I think, lives up to the hype. It's a really excellent game. 
Underneath that, we've got Civilization A New Dawn. So this is the newer Civilization game. Um, I've enjoyed this one. Um, uh, it's quite abstracted, but it's got this thing where you select a card um, as an action, and then once you resolve it, it goes down to the bottom of the priority, and it becomes weaker. So you're kind of cycling through your different actions and triggering them at the right time um, to try and get the most efficient use out of them. That's a really cool mechanic. Um, it's got different sieves with slightly different powers. They're not super impactful, but they give you a wee bit of variety there. It's got a really nice production. If you want a, a Civ game that plays quite quick, but you, and you don't mind it being too abstracted, then this is probably the best bet um, you have right now at that sort of experience. So that's Civilization and Udon. Underneath that, we've got Imperial Settlers. Um, Imperial Settlers uh, is one of my favourite games. It's an engine building kind of Civ game where you all play different factions, races, and you're trying to just build the best engine to generate points. Um, the theme here ties pretty well it's, uh, to it, you know, it's fairly thematic, um, but the main thing I like about it is the multi-use cards and all the mechanics of the game. I think it's, it's a fabulous design, um, and I'm surprised it doesn't really see as much play, um, because it just, you know, I don't really see people playing this one. Um, but Imperial Settlers, brilliant, really, really enjoy it, one of my favourites. Underneath that we've got Sidereal Confluence. Sidereal Confluence um, is um, a trading negotiation game. It's like a similar to Chinatown, but just with a bit more going on. Um, it's quite a long game, there's quite a lot involved, but if you want pure negotiation in a game, and you like a sci-fi theme, then Sidereal Confluence is, uh, you can't, you know, you can't really do better than it, to be honest. Um, it's had quite a, a number of positive reviews from big names like, uh, no pun included, and Shut Up and Sit Down. So, yeah, there's a reason for that. It's a really, really great game if you like negotiation. Again, very group dependent, you know. If you play, play with people who are more Euro gamers, who, you know, like games that are almost more like solitaire, then they're probably not going to enjoy this one. But with the right crowd, it's an absolute hoot. Okay, over here to the right, we've got the uh, last section here, and this is a collection of just Euro games. So we've got Castles of Burgundy, which uh, is uh, the only Stefan Feld game I own, actually. Um, it's a really, really excellent um, tile placement game that uses dice. Um, it's... Uh, Got lots of different strategies to kind of winning because of the there's so many different ways to generate points. Um, the production's not brilliant; it's pretty abstracted, so the theme's really not not really there. But the mechanics are really good, um, and it's really the only Stefan Feld game I've really played. But I think it's a really really great design. Also really cheap as well, so it's really really um, quite easy to pick up. So yeah, definitely grab that one um, if you can. Underneath that, we've got Terra Mystica and Gaia Project. We'll kind of just talk about these together because they're so similar. Um, these are really heavy uh, engine building resource management euros. Um, the production of both of them is really nice. Terra Mystica's fantasy, Gaia Project's uh, more sci-fi. In a lot of respects, they're very similar. Um, you uh, control either a sci-fi race or a, f a fantasy faction that has their own kind of powers and abilities and you're just trying to play to your strengths. It's probably one of the heaviest Euros that I've played, this system. There's just so many things going on. There's like seven different actions you can you can pick. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really, really excellent, excellent um, uh, Euro game, both, both of them. In terms of which one to go for, um, I would say uh, if you like the sci-fi theme more, go for um, uh, Gaia. The only thing really um, that you would need to consider is player counts as well. Terra Mystica plays up to five, Gaia plays up to four. So if you really need five player, you have to get Terra Mystica. If you're not bothered, I would just pick the one that you prefer the theme of. Um, there are some improvements to some things in Gaia um, that maybe make the game um, uh, objectively better, but Overall, I think they're both great games. So I would really just pick up the one that you like the look of more. Um, at the bottom here, we've got Concordia Venus. So this is the, the standalone expansion um, that comes with the, the Venus stuff and the extra boards, um, which I just thought was a better deal than the base game, really, because it was about the same price. Concordia is one of the two um, Matt Gertz games that I own. It doesn't have the Rondell mechanic, which is interesting, because that's what most of his games are famed for. But it has this kind of card... Um, action selection um, and engine building thing to it and it's also got some area control as well with the board um, the theme is really really pasted on the production's okay it's, it's quite a, quite a nice looking game 
but the mechanics are just great. It's a, again, it's one of these ones. It's really easy to teach, um, you know, and bring people into the game. Um, but there's quite a lot of stuff going on that makes that gives you those interesting decisions. Um, so yeah, uh, Concordia I think is a classic. It's again, this is one I think is going to be an evergreen game. Um, people are going to be playing this for many many years because it's just such a great design. Okay, and finally over here on the right we have. Uh, Century Spice Road. Now earlier I talked about Splendor. I, I mentioned a game that kind of replaced it. This was the game that I was referring to. But going back and playing Splendor, I actually think there's a place for both in the collection. Century Spice Road shares some mechanics with Concordia. The way that the cards are kind of collected and the fact that you need to rest to get them all back in your hand. Um, but really it's a cute pushing engine building game. Theme, who cares really. Um, you're there for the mechanics. Um, and it's a really, really solid game. So I would say, um, if you're looking for a good puzzle, abstract game, family weight, Splendor and, and this are your two uh, two really solid options for you. And there's no reason that you can't pick up both. There are um, other games in the series, the Century series. I've not played Eastern Wonders or New Dawn, the newer ones. Um, I would like to try them, but... At the moment, the, the very first one, Spice Road, is, is still really good. So yeah, that is one definitely to consider.